In this video, we are going to discuss the four chemical reactions that you will need to know for both external and internal respiration. Be sure that you can recognize both the formulas and the names of each of the formulas for each of the following reactions. We will begin with external respiration. Remember that external respiration refers to oxygen from outside of the body crossing cell layers into our bloodstream. External respiration then refers to gas exchange between the lungs and the capillaries of the pulmonary system. Also, think about what we want to gain at the lungs and what we want to get rid of. Obviously, we want to gain oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide. So what we know is this. Oxygen diffuses across the walls of the alveoli and capillaries into the bloodstream where oxygen binds with hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin. Think of the hemoglobin molecule as the taxi that picks up various passengers in the bloodstream and delivers its passengers to where they are needed. Another passenger carried by hemoglobin is carbon dioxide. When hemoglobin binds to carbon dioxide, a compound of carb-aminohemoglobin is formed. Carb-aminohemoglobin is delivered to the lungs where the carbon dioxide is released from the hemoglobin molecule and diffuses out of the bloodstream into the alveoli so that it can be exhaled. Excess hydrogen ions are also carried to the lungs by hemoglobin. When hydrogen ions bind to hemoglobin, a molecule called reduced hemoglobin is formed. When reduced hemoglobin reaches the lungs, the hydrogen ion is released from the hemoglobin molecule and hemoglobin is now free to pick up oxygen. If hydrogen ions continue to be released in the capillaries around the lungs, the tissue would become highly acidic. So what happens to the excess hydrogen ions? The hydrogen ions are buffered by a molecule called the bicarbonate ion. When hydrogen ions bind to the bicarbonate ion, a molecule called carbonic acid is temporarily formed. Carbonic acid quickly breaks down into carbon dioxide and water, both of which diffuse into the alveoli and are exhaled. These are the four equations for external respiration that you need to know. If we simply reverse these four equations, you now have the equations for internal respiration. Internal respiration refers to the exchange of gases between the tissues of the body and the systemic capillaries. So let's begin. First, oxygen has been carried to the tissues of the body in the form of oxyhemoglobin, which breaks down to release the oxygen molecules from the hemoglobin molecule. Oxygen is now free to diffuse across the cell membrane into the cells of the body to provide them with oxygen. Hemoglobin binds to the carbon dioxide that is diffusing out of the cell into the bloodstream to form carb-aminohemoglobin. The hemoglobin is also buffering the blood by taking up excess hydrogen ions to form reduced hemoglobin. But where did all the hydrogen ions come from? Some of the carbon dioxide that diffuses out of the cells of the body will react with water to temporarily form carbonic acid. Carbonic acid breaks down right away to form the bicarbonate ion and hydrogen ions. This then is the source of hydrogen ions that needs to be buffered by the hemoglobin molecule and forms the molecule called reduced hemoglobin. Be aware that some carbon dioxide does diffuse out of the tissues into the bloodstream and simply travels through the bloodstream to the lungs in the form of dissolved carbon dioxide. With the exception of the example of dissolved carbon dioxide, the four formulas listed here are the exact opposite of external respiration. So get to know external respiration really well 
and then just reverse it for internal respiration. I will not go into details on cellular metabolism in this unit as it is not required for this course. You should know that cellular metabolism refers to the breakdown of glucose and oxygen to produce energy in the form of ATP. During this process, carbon dioxide and water are also produced and are the waste products of this chemical reaction.